Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're doing a takeoff performance test. So this was really popular on X-Plane 11. I'm gonna go ahead and do one here with the default A320neo. So what, if you haven't seen one of these videos before, basically what I've done is I've taken the weights and takeoff performance numbers of a real aircraft and on a real flight, matched it in the simulator as close as possible, and then we set a timer and we measure our takeoff roll and time for takeoff and liftoff and all that. So. We've got the airplane set up here on runway 26 left in Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport, and we are in the A320 NEO. All right, so setting up this flight, we can check our weather here. We have a wind layer here at ground level at 320, and we'll set the speed to 5 knots. Actually, it's probably just easier if I do this. So we've got 5 knots there set for wind. That looks good. And we go back here. I've already set the hectopascals. It was 2 9 or, nine or 8, which translates about 1015, with a temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, 952 in the morning, off runway 26 left in Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. So let's go ahead and load this up and see what the sim gives us. Now, hopping into the cockpit here, there's a couple of things I want to point out for you. I've got my fuel already set to 10, uh, let's see, 10,000 kilograms there, and our gross weight of 68.4 kilograms. So that is translated from pounds to kilos. Now, let's look at the other weight and balance items here. This is how I set my aircraft up. I've got it in the pounds right here. So about 47% fuel is what we needed, which gives us the correct fuel that we had on the real aircraft. And our weights are pretty much in line with that. So our gross weight, which is what is the most important thing is for this test, is 68.4 in the real airplane. We're 68.387. That's pretty close. And the longer we sit here, the more fuel we burn. So it's pretty darn spot on as far as weights go. The only thing that I can't match up exactly is the V speeds. So in the real aircraft, our V speeds calculated for this flight were 151, 153, and 155. However, I cannot input these into this uh, perf takeoff computer here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly the speeds that I had in real life and we'll overlay them on the screen for you and then we'll set the timer. So I can't start the chrono because that is also inoperative here. Um, we can't start that one or that one either, so I'll have to overlay a timer for you as well. But what we are looking for is eight seconds from the enunciation of flex here in the FMA, zero to 80 knots, and then from zero all the way to rotation. So as you can see here on the paperwork, I had 31 seconds to V1 and 15 seconds to 80 knots. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll zoom in on the cockpit view here. I'm gonna release the parking brake. What we'll do is as soon as I see flex and unseated up here, we'll start the timer. I gotta cheat with my view here to make sure I don't overset the uh, detents here. So, all right, let's go ahead and give this a shot here. So we'll spool them up 50%. Here we go. Man flex 52 SRS runway. Auto thrust is blue, that looks good. Eighty knots, thrust set. Looking for one hundred and fifty three knots, one hundred and fifty three, one fifty three, or rotate. All right, so you can see there at the end, it actually was pretty spot on to that eighty knot speed. Then we got a little bit fast there, about a second and a half to a second early before reaching 31 seconds for the published uh, the R speed. So, I don't know, that's pretty close. That kind of puts it within the margin of error, I think. Um, but I can tell you from my experience that I still feel this airplane is significantly overpowered. Now, I don't know if it's maybe some of the flight dynamics and the, the drag once it's airborne. So I will continue to investigate further, but I did think these results were pretty shocking that they were as close as they were out of the gate. I know in X-Plane 11 when we did this test with the Flight Factor 320, initially it was extremely overpowered, and then they made some tweaks and got it down to pretty accurate. TOLUS has been pretty accurate from the get-go from X-Plane 11 for their performance on their aircraft models, so I will tell you this, I am surprised that it was as close as it was in this video. 
but I will continue to investigate the performance of the A320neo. I hope you guys are enjoying this content. I will see you again here very soon. See ya!